Hey folks, yesterday I got one of my frequently asked questions again and I just checked and I've done videos about this before and I've done blogs about this before and I hope I'm not boring all of you but since I get this question so often I thought maybe I should make another video about it. And the question this time was framed in terms of monk training. So I did a, a video last year about how to find a teacher Oh, I did some other videos, I can't remember the titles, but they're all kind of overlapping things. So let's talk about it in terms of monk training. This person wanted to know how to get, how to be trained to be a monk and where to go to find that sort of thing. Uh, the answer in short is I don't know. And so if you want to finish watching the video, you can, because that's the answer. I don't know. But uh, let me see if I can make a longer answer out of that. The only sort of training I ever got that, that you would call monk training is I hung around two teachers, Tim McCarthy and Gudo Wafu Nishijima Roshi, and followed them around and asked them questions and watched what they did. And so in that sense, as I've said in other videos and blogs and things, it was sort of like an apprenticeship. You know, an apprenticeship is you want to learn how to make pottery, so you go find a potter who makes pottery and that potter will let you hang around his workshop and watch what he does and maybe ask a couple questions and as long as you don't annoy him that's the kind of training so-called training I got I think a lot of times when people ask this question they imagine there is some sort of training to be had like lessons like when I was in junior high school I took judo classes from uh, Mr. Park uh, in Copley, Ohio. I think it was Copley, Ohio. Anyway, I would go to Mr. Park's studio with a bunch of other, you know, nerdy junior high school kids, and uh, he'd show me, or he'd show all of us how to do a throw, or how to do a roll, you know, this, this sort of way you're supposed to fall. They show you how to fall first, because that's more important than learning how to throw somebody. And I took those for like, like six months. I wish I'd taken it longer, but that, that was the sort of thing. So I guess, you know, when I try to think of, of this, I guess people imagine that there's that sort of thing to be had in the world of Zen and that they can just go sign up for it. Uh, as far as I know, there isn't. Uh, if you want to do that sort of thing, then you're going to have to make a big commitment. You know, it's not going to be a once a week sort of thing or three days a week sort of thing. It's not going to be something you can do online. It's going to be something you're going to have to commit to. You're going to have to say, I want to do this training for this period of time, and you're going to have to go and do it. In the United States, uh, San Francisco Zen Center offers a thing like that. I believe Zen Mountain Center out in um, upstate New York does it. Maybe Minneapolis Zen Center. I'm not sure. There are places here and there that do it. Angel City Zen Center is not one of them, so don't ask me to do that for you. But I want to give you a little uh, taste of what you might get if you did that. And this is a book called Eat, Sleep, Sit, which I would recommend to anybody who is sitting there thinking, maybe I'd like to try to train to be a Zen monk. You should buy this book and you should read it. And I just opened it to a random page not even trying very hard to find a, a good spot and here's what I found on on a random page and I'm gonna read it to you uh, this is from when he is learning how to sleep as a monk and it says when the inspections were over so their inspections night sitting was over in the monks hall as well and before long the bell signaling time for bed began to resound in the corridors we each lugged our inspected and approved quilts over to our mat in the monk's hall. From now on, this is where we would sleep. Doing so meant we would have to sleep according to the numerous rules laid out by Dogen in his text, How to Train in Buddhism. So here we go, training. So this is what Dogen says about how to sleep. When going to sleep, lie always on your right side, never on your left. Your head must always point in the direction of the Buddha statue. If you place your head toward the wooden edge of the platform, it will naturally point in the right direction. Do not sleep face down or with knees raised. Do not sleep face up with the legs crossed or stretched out. Do not sleep with your kimono pulled up or naked or in other unseemly ways like a rascal. Mm. Don't want to be a rascal. Do not undo your sash. When you finally go to sleep in this way, do so focused on a point of light in your mind. And we're back to the author, uh, Kaoru uh, Nonomura, saying about this. A bell announces bedtime at 9 p.m. 
At this signal, the trainees all head to the monks' hall and, standing in front of their own mat, perform a triple obeisance to the shrine in the center. After this, each one turns to his own place, bows once, and mounts the platform. Then he removes his mantle and robe, folds them in the prescribed way, and puts them on the shelf. There are no night clothes at Aheji, that's the monastery where Dogen established. Everybody sleeps in the same kimono he wore all day. And it goes on from there, and that is just how to go to bed, okay? So, so that, that's just, you know, the, the smallest, most ordinary part of it. If you go to a place like Tassajara in the United States to do your monk's training, they're not quite as strict as Dogen was with all this stuff. They actually give you individual sleeping quarters, which is a luxury that monks in Japan, when they're training, don't have. And so nobody's going to inspect whether you're sleeping on your right side or your left side or your knees are pulled up or what you're sleeping in and all that. But there's a pretty strict protocol for when to wake up and what you're going to do all day is is all laid out. So you, you don't have... They, they do have what they call free time, but they, even that free time is, is limited in to certain things you're allowed to do. And the nature of Tassajara is that it's so far away from everything that you're not, you're not going to go anywhere <laughs> except there. Uh, so, you know, everybody's going to know what you're doing anyway. So that is monk's training. And that is the nature of the beast in terms of Zen, because Zen is, is that kind of a thing. There are other forms of sort of non-dualistic philosophy where they don't bother with any of this. You know, if you if you go to an Advaita sort of teacher, as far as I know, they don't they don't worry about so much, you know, what you're doing, and and that's how they train you. Certain Zen teachers don't care very much about this stuff. As committed as Nishijima Roshi was to Dogen, uh, he never had us do any of this stuff, even on retreats. Uh, although we don't, did all sleep in one room. We didn't sleep in the Zendo, and we didn't sleep facing the Buddha statue or anything, but all of us had to sleep in, in one single room. One room for the men, one room for the women. So so we did that. But that was just for retreats, and retreats were a maximum with Nishijima Roshi of three days long, because he didn't believe in doing a retreat longer than three days. This is a whole thing. The The other thing I should say about training is that there's all sorts of versions of it, as I think I've indicated already, from really, really strict training like you get at Aheji Monastery to really loose sort of training, if you can even call it that, uh, of what I got from uh, Nishijima Roshi and from Tim McCarthy, of just kind of, you know, here's what you do. Another point is that in most monasteries you go to, and, and with any sort of relationship you have with a teacher, what you want to learn, you're going to have to figure out for yourself. You're going to have to figure out what you want to learn about, and you're going to have to ask for that specifically. Um, I, I don't think, uh, never having gone through the sort of monk training that they have at Aheji or Tassajara, at Aheji you might get specific sort of, you know, one, two, three, here's what you do sort of lessons because they're training people to be temple priests in Japan. If you go to an American Zen monastery, uh, from what I understand anyway, you're pretty much going to have to ask, what do you want to know about? Uh, for example, do you want to know priestcraft? And priestcraft is basically all the things a priest does, like uh, running ceremonies and, and things like that. I did not learn priestcraft from Nishijima Roshi or from Tim because neither one of them was interested in that. So when I went to Tassajara, I asked about that. I asked my friend Greg Fain, who uh, was the tanto, the, the head of practice at Tassajara, uh, how do you do these things? And he showed me, and I've even got videos of him showing me how to do certain uh, ceremonies and things. So in that case, I said morning Zen service, doshi position, which is doshi is, is the, the leader of the practice, the, what the, what the so-called head priest does. Um, how do you do head doshi? Uh, if you want to know the, the various, uh, you know, how do you do the bell ringer position? How do you do the, the, the chanter position? Whatever it is, uh, you can sign up for it there and they will teach you how to do it. But you have to ask. This is one of the other questions that always comes up when people ask me this question. They, they, they ask for Zen training as if I know what it is and they're gonna, I don't know what they're, what they're planning to do, you know, 
sign up for it and sign a release and pay money or something. I have no idea. And then I'm going to give it to them. And I'm, I'm going to give them this training regimen that they think exists somewhere. Uh, but it doesn't exist. <laughs> there is no training regimen that exists. And so the point is that if you are saying something like, I want to be trained to be a monk, that's too vague of a question. You're going to have to say, I want to learn how to ring the bells uh, in morning service and evening service. I, I want to learn how to do dokusan, a private interview with somebody. Um, if you are planning to be ordained, there's usually a process for that at places that have those sort of processes set up, but in most cases it's kind of whimsical uh, in the sense that it's not like, as far as I understand, having never actually done this, if you want to become a Catholic priest, you, you can sign up for a seminary and you can go through the steps and they're all kind of laid out and at the end of it you get your certificate and, and bada bing bada boom you're a priest. Uh, that doesn't really exist in the Zen world, which means you're going to have to know specifically what you want and why you want it and you're going to have to be able to have a lot of conversations with your teacher over what that is and how you're going to do it and where you're going to go once you've done it and all these sorts of things. It's not something that the teacher is going to hand to you or, or that there's a, like a, a little pamphlet that you go, here, follow this, follow this pamphlet. It doesn't work like that. So that's my answer to the question of how to get Zen training and how to do Zen training. And I know it wasn't much of an answer, but <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you want to see me keep making more scattershot videos like this about Zen training and stuff, send me a donation at the address you're seeing on your screen below, or if you're on YouTube, the direct links to Patreon and PayPal are in the video description. I thank you very much. If you're having financial trouble, do not donate to me because I'm not desperate or anything, but the reason I'm not desperate is because people like you kind folks do donate to me, so I thank you very much for that. Have a good time all the time. See you later. Bye.